Great. Well, thank you guys for sticking with us. I'm Rob McDonald. I have a brief presentation here to talk about some of the more advanced features that you can do with modeling a wing. So I'm not going to be talking about the primary things of setting up a plan for multiple sections and adjusting the airfoil. We're going to go a little bit deeper into some of the other features and the other tabs on a wing to uh, give some introduction into how all these things work. Specifically, we're going to talk about using the control surface subsurfaces. We're going to talk about mesh clustering on the wing, uh, the section modification tab, and also wing blending. And this is an example of a wing that exhibits all of these things. You can't see the clustering because it's shaded, but it's clustered, it's blended, it's got control surfaces, and uh, the trailing edge has been modified. So to start with, uh, the work that was done to do um, advance the improvements to control surfaces, there's a few things here. Uh, what you have to realize is that a control surface, that a subsurface is drawn in the UV surface coordinates um, on the surface of a wing. And so what that means is that a, a straight line in UV space does not necessarily make a straight line in three-dimensional space. And so you'll often have cases where if originally, if you would build a control surface before we added this cap some of these improvements that we're talking about, the, the front of the control surface would be curved in 3D space, but now we try and make it straighter and it's not perfect. If you're to sight, you can see there's a little gap right here. If you sight along this line, you'll see there's a little bit of a wiggle, but we're doing better at trying to straighten out this line. So that's one of the things that's been done for control surfaces. In addition, we've got all these different parameters that allow us to control its position, its control surface dimensions, either in terms of fraction X over C or dimensional length in, in the dimension units of your model. And then things like being able to make the end angle where originally here, you'll notice that the control surface edge is aligned with the chord definition. Whereas here, it's actually making a right angle. It's making a 90 degree angle with the trailing edge, the edge that it meets up against. So we've got these different options to help model control surfaces and make them more realistic for subsurfaces. When you're working with a control surface, we draw the hinge line as we feed it to VS Piero as this line that runs down the middle. And then we also show the direction of positive rotation from a VS Piero standpoint. So here you can see that the right hand aileron positive is trailing edge down, whereas the left hand one is positive trailing edge up. And if you're ever unsure as to how this is going to go down, what you can also recognize is that these control surfaces all follow the right hand rule. So if you just point your thumb along the hinge line, your fingers curl your, of your right hand, <laughs> your fingers curl in the direction of positive rotation. And that's why you stick your thumb out the right hand wing, positive, your fingers curled, trailing edge down. If you stick your thumb out the left hand wing, positive, your fingers curl trailing edge up. We have the ability to control some clustering, and we can do that both in the span wise and the core wise direction. And this is really easy to work with. The thing you need to understand is that the parameter is based on a fraction of the spacing if it had instead been uniform spacing. And the spacing is not done strictly in the cord wise along the cord line. It's actually done in, in an arc length along the surface. And so what you'll see is a 1.0 at the leading edge and a 1.0 at the trailing edge. We end up approximating as close as we can uniform arc length spacing where every one of these panels has the same arc length along this airfoil from front to back. And so now when we control the clustering, it becomes a multiplier. How big is the first panel at the leading edge or at the trailing edge as a ratio to that uniform clustering? So at the trailing edge, if we make it a 2.0, you'll notice that this first panel is now twice as long as it was when it was a 1.0. And if we change it to the front to 0.1, this first panel is now one tenth the length that it was originally or likewise 0.25 and 0.25, we'll adjust those to be one quarter at the leading and trailing edge. 
Now, in between, what we do is we use a, a hyperbolic tangent stretching function as of version 310. So that was kind of ancient history by now. But this hyperbolic tangent stretching function allows it to then smoothly figure out how to vary between these requests to go and figure out how do I start at 0.25 and end at 0.25 and still fit the requested number of panels in here and do that with as smooth and, and as, as elegantly a variation as possible. And this hyperbolic tangent stretching function is the exact same thing that's used in a lot of structured mesh genera generators, including Chimera grid tools. And so if you generate a structured surface mesh in VSP on a wing, using clustering with these kinds of parameters and you export that into something like Chimera Grid Tools, you get the exact same mesh as a surface mesh that you would get if you natively generated it in Chimera Grid Tools. So for things like that, it's uh, just as good as using a lot of other tools down the road. Now there's the Modify tab. And we may not have mentioned this yet here in, in the workshop, but a lot of GUIs you'll notice have many tabs or multiple tabs. And in general, kind of a rule of thumb when we design these GUIs is we put the most frequently used tab at the left. And as you go to the right, they become less and less frequently used and they become a little bit more esoteric. And so as a user, you can generally know that sort of start with the tabs on the left, and if, if they're not capable of doing what you want, check out the next tab to the right and keep going. But for you know most usage, you'll never go all the way over here to the right. And that's just kind of a rule of thumb of how we try and design things to be intuitive in the user interface. So the last tab for the wing component is the section modification tab. And what it allows us to do is modify the airfoil. So the airfoil is specified in the airfoil tab, but what if there's something you want to do to mess around with it? And this just sort of happens. It's sort of a, a post-processing on the lofting of the wing where you set up your airfoil normally, and then you can change things. So the first part allows you to shift, rotate, and scale. And so this allows you to shift in X and Y. Again, these are in the airfoil's local X and Y coordinates. You can shift that airfoil section. You can rotate it. You can scale it bigger or smaller, and you can move that lofting where the leading edge is lofted on that surface. We can talk about some of the uses for this, but for example, one trick used for this is if you are trying to model a flap or an aileron you know, on a high lift wing in detail, what you can do is you can leave all of the wing's main section parameters, the aspect ratio, taper ratio, span. You can leave those alone you can read in the airfoil section for your flap element, and then you can scale this element down. Say the flap is only 20% of the cord of the wing, you change scale to 0.2. And then you can use X over C, the delta X over C, to, to translate it back, whoops, uh, to translate it back so that it starts where the flap starts. You can shift it down with Y and you can rotate it with theta. And so you can use this to, essentially position the flaps airfoil uh, with while still leaving the main wing parameters alone. And this is great so that you can have actually two wing components, one with say your cruise wing and then one with your high lift element. And as long as those two have the same taper, sweep, span, aspect ratio, dihedral, right? All those parameters are the same. What you're going to get is this flap element, since you're, you're sort of post-processing the high lift element in it using these modifications, uh, it'll always match what that parent wing should be. And that's a neat way to try and add some of that detail if you need to. Another thing that we find is that airfoils are never the way you want them to be. Um, in particular, a lot of mathematically derived airfoils may have perfectly sharp, razor sharp trailing edges. Um, or maybe they have a trailing edge that's not razor sharp, but for example, the NACA four digit airfoils actually have a trailing edge thickness of about, I think 1% thick. Real airplanes all have slightly blunt trailing edges, right? We have manufacturing tolerances 
Um, you might have a piece of extrusion that makes up the trailing edge and it has a finite trailing edge thickness, or you might have a couple of pieces of sheet metal that come together. And so you have a non-zero, right? This is not the, the sharpened knife blade trailing edge. So you have a non-zero trailing edge thickness, but it's probably not the same thickness as that file was. It's probably not the 1% thick that the NACA airfoil came in. So one of the things that we frequently need to do is to come in and modify the trailing edge to come in and say, you know what, we want to blunt its thickness or we want to thicken that airfoil. And there's different ways of adjusting the thickness. Sometimes you thicken the whole foil. Sometimes you just cut off the, the trailing edge until you reach the thickness that you want. So these different techniques, sometimes you take a, a blunt trailing edge in a file, but you want to extrapolate it to a sharp trailing edge for a certain analysis code, like a panel code. And so that's really what all these different options are for, is how do you want to go about modifying that trailing edge so that your points match whatever your purpose is for your model. And in that process, we can also add a cap to the trailing edge. So I'll demonstrate what that is in a bit, but that cap can either be flat or rounded or cusped or pointed. So we've got some choices and then we can control the parameterization of that. And once you understand sort of why you would want to modify these things, then I think most of the parameters will make sense. It's the confusing thing is people come to it and they, they don't understand why on earth this modify tab even exists. And it's really just confusing if you don't think about some of these use cases. Now the blend tab of a wing is, is kind of like projected area in that it makes sense if we first start by talking about some nomenclature, we talk about how it works and why it works the way it does. So the first thing that you need to understand when we go to blend a wing is how this GUI is laid out and how it reflects a wing. So at the bottom here on the left, I've got a, a cartoon of a wing with two sections. And this the sections then have airfoil zero, airfoil one, and airfoil two going out the span. And if we think about controlling blending, we're always going to control blending at an airfoil. And when we start at airfoil zero, airfoil zero has an inboard side and an outboard side. And of course, the inboard side doesn't exist, so we've grayed it out. And so you can only control the outboard side. In the middle of a wing, say at section airfoil one, we obviously have both an inboard and an outboard side. And so they're both going to be black, they're going to be available for us to work with. And what we're doing with blending is we're actually adjusting and modifying the leading edge curve and the trailing edge curve of the wing, either on the inboard side of a section or on the outboard side. And so you can think, okay, we've got this leading edge inboard, trailing edge inboard, leading edge outboard, and trailing edge outboard as four places where we can control the plan form of the wing in order to make a blended section. And that's exactly how the GUI here is set up on the right. Up at the top, we can choose which airfoil, and you can see that right now we're blending at airfoil one. So we're on this middle section, and so both inboard and outboard should be dark. They should be black. There are options for us to work with. And then we have the top half of the remainder of the GUI is under this block here that says leading edge. And so it controls the leading edge line, and then below it, we have something that controls the trailing edge line. In addition to that, the left-hand side of both of these controls the inboard edge, and the right-hand side controls the outboard edge. And so this is sort of a matrix GUI where we're controlling what happens to that plan form line in each of these four quadrants relative to a given blend airfoil. So inboard, outboard, leading and trailing edge. And as long as you understand that, this should make a lot of sense. The next thing to think about is how we're modifying these edges. And you notice right now it says free, 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 free. And what that means is we're just allowing them to be free to do what they want. They are unconstrained. And in this case, when you have unconstrained points that go from here to here, what that means is we're not applying any additional conditions. We're not telling it what to do. And so it's going to do the simplest possible thing, which is a straight line between those two points. What we can do is we can start to specify other constraints, other requirements. So for example, we can choose, we can choose for them to be free, 
Or we can choose what angle we want that leading edge to come off at. So instead of it finding a straight line, we can tell it, oh, I want to come off at zero degrees, or I want to come off at 45 degrees. And that'll change the, that angle to match the constrained value. And what VSP will do is when you specify a constraint, it will then find what is the simplest curve that obeys your constraint that makes that leading edge or trailing edge modification happen. So you can manually specify the angle, or if you want, you can also tell it that you want to match the theoretical trapezoidal wing. And you'll see that over here on the right are the choices. We have free angles, and then we have in LE trap, in TE trap, out LE, out TE. So what this means is we're matching the inboard leading edge theoretical trapezoid wing or the inboard trailing edge wing or the outboard leading edge. And so what we're saying here is, is we want to match something for what that other condition would be if it, if it wasn't blended. That's what I mean by the theoretical trapezoidal wing or by trap here. It's sort of we, we want to match the value of the straight line wing. And otherwise, if we want to match based on angles, then we can, there's this option where it will uh, basically create continuity. We can match on angles. And along with some of the other things in this GUI, anything that's not available because it simply doesn't make sense. For example, you're at section zero, so there is no inboard section. These inboard options will be grayed out. So an example, and I'll walk through this in a minute, but we're going to make a blended wing like the one that you saw on the first slide of this presentation. So the first thing to do in this case is to split a standard wing into four sections. And this is going to become sort of the root, the body section, the main section of the wing, a transition, and then the winglet itself. And I haven't adjusted their span yet. I just chopped up this wing into four sections. And we'll know that then we're going to modify these into that landform. And so then adjusting that's the next step. We adjust the cords so that they match what we want. And we adjust the spans. So they have that inboard section, the main wing, the blend, and then that winglet. And for this case, the next thing to do is to make the dihedral what we want it to be. And there's two things that we need to do. We need to choose the option to rotate the foil to match dihedral. And that's important so that we have good airfoils coming through and we're getting a, a good airfoil on the tip of our winglet. And then in this case, we want to put half of our winglet angle in each. So if we want this to be a 90 degree winglet, we'd put 45 degrees at each, or maybe we'd put 40 degrees at each and we'd have a slightly canted out winglet. But we're going to split that at the beginning and the end of our blend section. And so far, we're just setting it up for blending. We haven't done any blending yet. Next, we want to think about our design intent. If we, and here I flatten it back out just so we can talk about it. But you can see, for example, at one of these sections, we'll say at the intersection where the body meets the main wing, we want to leave the main wing as straight trailing edges, as a, as a nice trapezoidal wing section. So what we want to do is we want to constrain this inboard leading edge. We want it to meet and match the outboard leading edge of the trapezoidal wing. We want to make that a continuity condition. We want to constrain that there. And we want to do the same thing. We want, to, we want this inboard edge, we want it to meet here with smooth continuity. So we want to make that as constrained. And then we'll also say we want a blunt nose. We'll want to come to this nose and we'll want to specify the angle. If we want it to come off blunt, we'll say we want this to be a 90 degree angle. And so we'll specify 90 degrees and that tangency, and that'll start to build up what is our design intent. We'll do the same type of thing out here. But what we're doing is we're looking at each of these places and we're thinking about what do we want to happen? What is our design intent? Where do we want smooth blends? Where do we want to control the angle? Out here, we're going to want smooth blends on the blend section but we want to leave the winglet itself as a trapezoidal wing and the main wing section as a trapezoidal wing. So all of our blending will be matching those theoretical trapezoidal wings at these joints. So once we've thought about this, then it's simply a matter of going through the GUI and setting all these constraints. So we're going to set, I said 90 degrees, I guess it's zero. So we set this leading edge angle at the root here. We set that to zero and we do that at the trailing edge. We make this 
inboard section here, we make it match the outboard leading edge trap and the outboard trailing edge trap. Here at this corner, we match the outboard leading edge trap and the outboard trailing edge trap. And likewise here, the inboard leading and trailing edge trap. So we set that design intent, just following what we'd thought through. And when we do that, um, that starts to set the shape of the wing. And then finally, there's going to be, when we set those constraints, we get this nice blended wing, as long as we then have some adjustment. And the adjustment is the tangent strengths, which I'll show you in the live demo how those work. But once we've set that angle, we may need to come in and tweak some of the strengths to control how sharply it bends through these corners. But the result is we get these nice blends, and you can see this main wing section and the winglet section are both still straight trailing and leading edges, trapezoidal wing sections, but with really nice blends here between these corners and at these joints. And with that, I'll go ahead and I'll jump and do a demo of, of exactly the things we've just talked about. Um, and Brandon, if anybody's shown any questions, you can, you can send them to me on the fly. Uh, but I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna do a wing. In fact, I'm going to do it much like we just showed. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna turn off the non-symmetrical side. We'll turn it back on in a minute. And I'm going to do no surface view so that we're just looking at the plan form. So it looks just like the, the thing, the tutorial and the screen of the presentation I did. I'm gonna come into the section. I'm gonna split it once, split it twice, come out to the outboard section and split it again. So now we're divided into those four sections that I talked about. Come to the inboard section and I wanna shorten that span down. So we'll make it have a span of one and maybe we'll increase that root cord some. So we'll we'll thicken that up a bit and we'll even uh, increase its sweep a bit so that we're, you know, we've made some adjustments so that it is more like that root body. Uh, the next section out, that's gonna be, let's say they make that have a span of six. That's gonna be most of our wing and we'll make the tip cord, we'll reduce that down to one. So that's most of our wing. Our transition, that's gonna be very small. Let's make it only have a span of 0.25. And for now, we'll make its root cord and its tip cord both be one. We'll make some fine adjustments on that later. And then we'll come out here to the tip and we'll say we want that to be a, the, the winglet will be have a height of one eventually and the tip cord, let's make that about a 0.6. So we've just gone through and we've set our main plan form type variables, what we want them to look like. And here, let me rotate it so that we're looking at a front view. Um, and next we're gonna come in and I wanna set our dihedral. So we're here, we need to rotate foil to match dihedral and let's put in say that 40 degrees and we'll do it all in a relative sense. That way they're cumulative. And so we'll go to the next one and we'll add another 40 degrees there. So now we've got our 80 degrees on the winglet with it broken in two. And that's a pretty good, nice, smooth way to make a winglet. And that's all we have to do for our main plan form. We've got something that roughly is looking like our, our wing ought to look. Next thing we want to do, we'll come back to a top view for this, is we want to adjust our blending. So we're at the root section, we're at airfoil zero. You can see we're highlighted in blue. Um, and remember here, the inboard side, there is no inboard side to the root. So all that's grayed out. And everything right now is free, which is why we're getting these straight lines. So at the leading edge, so this top right GUI, we wanna specify an angle and it initializes it to the values that were already there. So we make no change initially, but we said that we wanted to make that a blunt straight line. So we change that angle to zero and we're not gonna change the dihedral angle or the strength right now. The trailing edge, we're also gonna control the angle and we're gonna set it to zero. So we've just set so that we're coming off square for those two. Again, we'll come back and we'll adjust strength later if we need to. Now I'm going to go to the next airfoil out. So now we're on this airfoil, it's highlighted in blue. And again, we wanna change, we wanna constrain this inboard leading edge. So we come to this upper left-hand GUI where we're on the inboard leading edge part and we want to match, right now it's unspecified, so it's doing the simplest thing, but now we want to match 
and we could specify an angle, right? We could come in here and we could set that angle to anything we want, right? We could control that angle anywhere we want. And that ringing you just saw, that was because the strength was not set well. So don't worry about that just yet. But we don't actually want to set this angle manually. We want it to match this line on the outboard side. That way we get a smooth transition to this trapezoidal wing. So we want it to match the outboard leading edge trapezoidal wing. So we'll choose that and you'll see that it just set that to be a nice smooth transition. We'll do the same thing at the trailing edge. We'll match it to the outboard trailing edge trapezoidal wing. And we get that nice smooth transition. Now again, we've got this ringing here because our strengths are not in good shape. Here it's got a strength of three, which is very strong here at the root. Whereas if we come to the inside side, it's got a strength of one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change that strength back to one on both of these. And at least for now, that'll at least get it tamed back down. But we may want to come in later and change these two strengths relative to one another to, to get that curve to behave the way we want. Right now, I'm more interested in getting the rest of this blend working. So next, I'll move to the next outboard section. Here we are at the outboard part of the main part of the wing. And again, so the inboard side, we don't want to do anything. We want to leave that alone. But the outboard side, we want to match the inboard leading edge trap and the inboard trailing edge trap. So we just match those blends. It's hard to see much happened here, but if I rotate and I come in, you'll see that we've already started blending because we're now coming here and we're, we're also smooth in the dehedral direction, right? Before, let me, let me turn this off again. You'll see that these are jumping up as straight lines. And so when I change that to match the outboard leading edge trap and the outboard trailing edge trap, um, oh, hmm. you're right, you're right, you're right. Inboard leading edge, thank you. There we go, inboard trailing edge trap. Uh, you'll see that we're matching these both in sort of the plan form, the sweep direction, but also in the sort of the dehedral direction. This line is a is a continuous continuation uh, that comes on up, but we're still meeting here with a corner because we haven't specified anything here. So the final thing we need to specify, let's come out to the next airfoil. Here we want to constrain the inboard side. We want it to match the outboard side. So this is the outboard leading edge and the outboard trailing edge side. So we match those up. And we've got a nice blend and, and you can't really necessarily appreciate it entirely in, in line form. So let's come in here. Um, we can change it back to a hidden or a wire. Um, I'm going to increase the tessellation just so that it's nice and smooth. I'm going to come into each section. And right now I'm just going to increase each of these up to a pretty large number, perhaps excessive, so that we have it nice and smooth. And then if I do a shaded view, um, you'll see that we have nice blends. And in fact, if we change it to something um, with a little bit more sheen to it, like Ruby, you can really see that we've got some really lovely surfaces and some really nice blends going on in these things. Um, and even here, you know, in this, in this blend, we've got really nice surfaces. And one of the things I really like about this is, of course, while we focused on getting uh on on just getting very quickly to this point now that we've specified design intent right we didn't have to we didn't have to dictate a whole lot of parameters to make this happen it's really flowing from the design intent of the trapezoidal wing so for example if we wanted to come in and nuance the design of this winglet we can come in and we're controlling the outboard section and actually let me uh there's two things we can do but First, if we twist this section, let's say we add some toe in, we had 10 degrees of toe in, you'll see that that toe in, you know, it slightly changed this angle down here, but it kept everything nice and smoothly blended. But we can also, of course, twist the root of, the, of that section. And so, you know, we have the ability here that we can twist um, the, the root and the tip or we can come in here and change one of these airfoils so that it has 
you know, we'll have some camber. We can we can invert the airfoil so that it's negative camber in this case, so that we're we have a flatter inside side, and we can twist and and tailor the lift distribution on the winglet as well as the wing, and we're not having to really mess around too much with the details of that blend. Um, I'm running a little bit over time. My next talk is me too. So I promised a little bit on some airflow modifications and also um, conformal. So let me quickly just add a conformal component to this. Um, and of course, the most one thing you pretty much always want to do when you're working with conformal is set the parent so that it's transparent. And we'll shade the inside one and let's make it something something pretty like Jade. And so here you'll see that we have a conformal component of this wing, and we probably wouldn't want a fuselage that goes up through the winglet. So we'll come in here and we'll trim in U and we'll bring this U max way down. So let's say that we just had a, a cargo bay on the interior part, and we're gonna trim in cord from uh, say 0.2 uh, to, to 0.8, something like that. And so here we've been able to come in and pretty quickly set up and, and we can do a show only on that um, where we've you know been able to come in and build uh, say an equipment bay or a fuel bay from a conformal from a blended wing um, and trim it down and, and even through those blends so that does work um, in, in to some extent uh, let me delete that real quick so that we can come in and I'll just look at modifying the root airfoil section here you'll see that this airfoil, um, it's a NACA airfoil, and we by default modify them to be perfectly, perfectly sharp. Uh, you'll notice that there's an option here to sharpen the TE. So in the formal NACA definition, as I said, it's it's like 1% thick, I think. So if you turn that sharpen off, this is now the NACA official definition with that 1% thick sharpness. But you know who really wants that? So now you can come into the trailing edge and we can modify its closure. And say so the easiest way to do that is to skew, which is adjust both the top and the bottom. And we can do that in a absolute as a fraction of a cord. So we're basically 1% of the cord thickness, or we could do it in a, in a relative way. Or I'm sorry, we're relative is we're less than that, we're point two percent thickness. So if we change that to zero. You can see we're just going to thin that airfoil back up. So we, we thickened that up. Um, but you could also, again, if you had something where you knew you had a 5% thick trailing edge, which is a lot, but it ex exemplifies what we're talking about, we can thicken that airfoil to do that. The cap types, as we said, there's, there's num numerous types where we can round that over. Uh, if you come to the plan form, there's the cap tessellation to adjust how smoothly we draw that. Um, so we can do round, we can do sort of a pointed edge or what's called sharp. And then these parameters control how that shape comes off. So if we have a, a strength of say one on sharp, what that's gonna do is that's essentially gonna be elliptical. It's gonna meet this smoothly and come out. Um, and you can offset it vertically up or down. So if you offset that to zero um, or to 0.5, if you offset it to 0.5, you'll see we're going to match this top line coming off as a straight extrapolation, and all of the cap will be curved on the bottom. And that's the same type of behavior for edge, except with straight lines um, or with round. And that's a little silly because now we're rounding it and coming up and around. But you get the idea that we've got these ability to control this. Uh, finally, I mentioned, you know, the deltas, the thetas, and the scales. So, you know, you can do that. You can translate that one section back. You could scale it way down, and you could rotate it in theta. And so, um, you know, by by adjusting that appropriately, um, if you were to go and do this across a wing, again, this is still positioned using that same um plan form the the section sweep and things like that uh but you could you could use that to position a high lift foil and you can also of course change its section so that this section if your main wing was a six series you know you could bring in and, and change the section type so that you have a, a different airfoil for your 
for your high lift than you have for your weight. And I think that's everything. Um, I've gone about five minutes over. I apologize for that. I'll go ahead and transition to the last pitch. Brandon, if there's any questions, you can maybe I can answer them on the fly. Uh, 